Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another legit unboxing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, To a medium mature, perhaps not used to seeing me, that being Minecraft. Um, <laughs> This is a video that uh, a lot of people have asked for for a good while now, and I uh, figured I'd sit down and make it. Uh, th that that being a world tour of my Minecraft world here. Look at this great world, isn't it? <laughs> so much to see, so much to do, right? <laughs> um, yeah, just 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 a tour of the world, showing you everything that I've built, maybe giving some of the thought process behind it in case you're interested in learning more or whatever. Um, this is the first build that I ever made in this world in a cave, of course, the broken Nether portal. Um. A little bit of background about this world. I looked it up. This world, I'm gonna I'm gonna estimate. So you can't know for sure, but I'm gonna estimate that this world is a little over six years old. It was probably created July 30th of 2015, which is one day after the first 1.9 snapshot. So you can see here, July 29th, 2015. My guess is that I made the world the day after those snapshots came out. Um, because I know that I wanted to have the 1.9 snapshots to get the new blocks, you know, the, the granite, the andesite. Is there a diorite here that I can see? Maybe? Is that diorite? Yeah, the diorite. I wanted to get those new blocks. Um, oh, I totally forgot about the box that I have to unbox. Whoa, what's in the box? Just a little... That was a degree glowing knife. Whoa! <laughs> Just a... <laughs> yeah, I don't... I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, interesting things about this world. It's old, is the point of me saying what I did. It's old. Um, very old. There's a lot of oddities in the world because of that. We might get to see it rain underground, for example. Another weird thing is you might notice my armor has some enchantments that normally don't go together. <laughs> for some reason, Mojang thought that it was a good idea in, I think it was 1.14, to allow you to have multiple kinds of protections. You can see on my pieces of armor here i have blast protection projectile normal prot and fire prot which normally is undoable so i have four or five sets of this kind of armor i think it's all diamond currently i upgraded this main set to nether nether right uh, and they even let you put enchantments on the elytra which is just broken i mean it is this armor is incredible i can just walk up to a creeper and just eat it and i can swim in lava and just eat it and everything so this world's old it's got a lot of a lot of history a lot of weird ins and outs and the first area that I want to show you highlights that, I think, very, very well. But first, this is the first build that I made in the world. My little starter house. Simple. I mean, really simple block palette, right? Gray, brown. I love purple, as you might tell from my skin. Which I guess I should show you. This is my skin. I made it, uh... Well, that's a little bit of a spoiler as to what, so what's coming next, I guess. But yeah, I made this skin as a 5th or 6th grader. I mean, it's an old skin. To match the old world. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I like the skin, I like purple, I like gray, I think they work well together, and... Yeah, I don't know. So you can see how this this sort of area and, and color palette is... It resembles my skin. I don't know, I was a very one-track-minded kid when I started building this world. Uh, not to say that I'm not still one-track-minded, but hey, whatever, right? Um, but yeah, starter house, right here, boom. Um, yeah, really simple, humble beginnings, I suppose. And, after I finished the starter house, the first big build in this world I completed was this... ...thing. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Uh, the original intention was for this to be a castle. Um, and you can see the interior... well, you could. Um, is a bit is a bit strange too. A little bit of history about this, this build here. Like I said, it's the first big build that I accomplished on this world, and I think it highlights my old build style. When I was really young, first getting into really playing survival a lot, I don't know, I built things hyper-detailed like this. So much... I don't know, there's just so much going on here that when I look at this now, I just think, gosh, that is so busy. There's just, there's too much detail. There's too many colors going on. And, um, I'm not in love with it, but it is, you know, it's a nostalgic build for me. I, I think it's, you know, I mean, it's an old build. It was, like I said, one of the first things I ever built in this world. Uh, on a large scale, you know, other than that thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it was, it was, this was a fun build, this was good. 
Um, it was the biggest project I had ever done in survival at the time when I built it. Uh, you'll see uh, how my, my project scale has perhaps expanded over the years. Um, but yeah, one of the really interesting things about this area, which I, I am now realizing, I never gave you the name of this area. This area is called Falcon Crest. Uh, the Kingdom of Falcon Crest. I guess I can fly up, give you a little bit of an overview of Falcon Crest and see an actual castle here. Um, and Falcon Crest, yeah. So, a little lower village here, and then uh, the actual village of Falcon Crest is over this area, kind of. Lots of little houses dotting around. Um, yeah. The original intention for this area was I just wanted to build a castle, and I thought that this was a great place to do it, so I built one. Um, I'll wander through it a bit. The original interior has been removed and redone, I think, three times. This is the third iteration, I think, of the interior. Um, so it, it's, it's incomplete, obviously, as you can see. Um, it was complete at one point in time, but I decided to redo it just because I didn't... I don't know, looking at this, this build... It doesn't scream castle to me, you know? Like, it doesn't... Nothing about this really feels castle-y, you know? So, I... I and especially when I, I wanted to really build a cool castle, which is what that build is over there. We'll get to that momentarily, but... Especially when I when I started building that big old thing, I thought, you know, this really doesn't fit as a castle anymore. So, I ended up deciding to make it more of like a... At one point, I thought, okay, maybe I'll make it like a cathedral or a church. Um, I still might go that direction, but what it is currently is is sort of like an armory, or like a knight's, a knight's templar almost, right? I, I, I imagine suits of armor lining the hallways here, and maybe there's some, you know, there's a mess hall downstairs or something like that where the knights can eat with each other, and I don't know, uh, there's towers with cows in them. Rita. Oh, I know what this is, yeah. You might have, uh, noticed. <laughs> this is from the last time I gave a tour of this world. Um... It is from Cow Pit, out here. Uh, Frida. As in freedom, as in the cow escaped the Cow Pit of Doom. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember last time I was giving, I think, my roommate last year a tour of this world. And uh, Frida escaped, and they, whoever I was giving the tour to decided to name them that cow Frida. And I said that I would make uh, make a home for Frida out in the, wild, in the wilderness, the wild. And then I just ended up trapping her here. So, sorry. I'll build you a home one day. Probably not. Almost, actually, almost certainly not. I'm so sorry, but... <laughs> anyway, this build, huh? I like it a lot. Um, just just because it is so nostalgic. Uh, I like the new flow of, of the build, like how I have things set up now. If I were to actually finish it, it might be a bit better, but hey, you know, whatever. Um, this is actually my first storage room down here. First storage room I had in this world. How many diamonds? Uh, none, apparently, but a little bit of iron. Um, yeah, I still use this area sometimes, just because there are still items here, uh, you know, scattered, strewn about, random bits of whatever. Um, we'll get to my main storage room in a little bit, but just an entrance, or an exit out the back, I should say, into the flower forest. I've always wanted to put something in this flower forest. I think this could be a really cool biome to build something in. Um, and it, it does extend back quite a ways. It's it's a pretty big flower forest, so I've always wanted to put something here. I just don't know quite what the right thing is. So, oh, that was a spoiler. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe one day there'll be a really cool build here. Um, to complement what's going over, what's going on here over in Falcon Crest. But anyways, Falcon Crest Castle, kind of. I don't know. It's not really a castle anymore, is it? Um, what if I? journey up here we go to what used to be the throne room and you can really see what i'm talking about with how busy my old build style was i don't know it's just there's so much going on there's so many colors blasting at you i just i think it is a bit too much um not to say that i don't like this it's very nostalgic for me but i don't know i i i think i've matured and i've i can build a lot better now but uh yeah my old throne I used to you know yeah it's my throne i sit here and i'm the king of falcon crest was kind of <laughs> What, uh, what started in this this area. Um, there were supposed to be two wings here off to the side where, you know, maybe the royal family could live or servants or attendants would be. Um, a little bit of an upstairs attic -y area and then each of these is sort of... What the heck? Okay. Each of these is sort of... Oh, more storage, huh? Um, 
you know, little, little rooms with pots, and there's, like, a kitchen area back here and stuff. I don't know. It's supposed to be, like, you know, there are people living here that would be able to help assist the king in his duties or whatever. Um, and the second wing doesn't exist. <laughs> like a lot of things in this world. Uh, I have an idea for a project, and it doesn't get finished. And you know what? I don't know if this one ever will, because I totally forgot this was unfinished until I came here to give the tour of the place. Um... But Falcon Crest Castle continues, the original Falcon Crest Castle, I should say, continues up to this sort of area here. Uh, oh, did I miss? I did miss. Uh-oh. I didn't want to miss. Here we go. Uh, this little overlook here to the, the, the city kingdom, really, is what it should be of Falcon Crest. Um, we'll get to a bit more of the, of the history of this area after I finish touring this building, because I think this is... This and then the castle are probably the two most significant buildings in Falcon Crest. This just because it's, you know, one of the first big projects I really did in this world. And I'm, it's still something I'm proud of. I don't know, it's it's cool. It is, I don't know, it is, it can be a bit much for sure. But uh, I still think it's cool and I, and I still like it. Um, this is another unfinished area. I don't know, there's, there's so many areas up here particularly. Like you'll see up here is supposed to be my bedroom. I made this before Elytra existed. So I'm really not sure why I, I put my bedroom all the way up here where, you know, it's, it just takes, you know, I mean, it was a maze to get up here, right? It was so difficult to get all the way up to, to here. I don't know why I ever did that, but yeah. Um, so that's kind of the castle, the old castle, I should say, of Falcon Crest. It, uh, it's nice. I don't know. I like it. It, um, it reminds me of my old build style very, very much so. But, uh... One of the really interesting things about this area that I really love is that I keep coming back to it with new ideas and once my style has evolved a bit. Um, and an example of this is this sort of outer gate here. Uh, this what didn't exist when this building was first built. I built this gate. I built this building probably five to six years ago. And I built this uh, a few months ago, I think. Maybe, maybe about a year ago now. Um, but that, I don't know. It's a really cool part of Falcon Crest, I think, that you can see my style evolve over time. Um, what tricks or things that I'm doing in my builds that, like, maybe I liked this one thing a whole lot at one point in time, and now I just sort of don't do it anymore. Um, but yeah, so the main, main village, or the main, uh, old castle of Falcon Crest. Who knows if it'll be, well, you know, who knows what it'll be in the future, but it used to be a castle, so I'll just call it the old castle. After I finished building that, I, I, I don't know, I, I felt like this area, I, I had built this road out too with all these bushes and stuff, and... My original intention was for the whole village to, well, for it to be a village, essentially, to kind of feel like this area here with lots of custom trees, very, very dense and wooded, and you'd have cabins with this without back walls for God knows why. <laughs> but you'd have cabins scattered around, and it would sort of be like a very wooded village. Um, and I and I just sort of thought about it, and I thought, I have this make a whole lot of sense. If there's a huge castle here, and it's right on the water, like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have a really wooded village. So... So I shifted from from that to more of like a like a big city sort of feeling, you know, medieval, big city, but still big. Um, and and it's it's since shifted to more of an idea of no, this is a you know this is a kingdom. Like it's got a big castle, it's got big buildings, it's got small buildings, it's got medium buildings, it's got it's got everything, right? Um, so so yeah, I won't uh, I won't look at all the buildings, but this one I think is is important and special. This is the first house I ever built in this, this area, like the actual, you know, village. This is the first house I built that I didn't intend to live in, I should say. Pretty simple. You can see the, um, oh wow. You know, not a whole lot going on here. You can see the exterior should remind you very much of, there we go, this area over here, the same castle. I mean, the build style is very similar. Lots of, lots of dark oak, spruce, glowstone with trap doors, all the stairs. Um, it's very, uh, very detailed style that I'm not sure... I don't know. I still like it. I think it holds up, but once it goes to a really small scale, it's okay. But I still think it's very busy on a large scale like that. That's my, you know, whatever. My personal thought, but... Anyway, if I eventually did move on. I did learn to not have things be that crowded and messy, and I built this area. This area is probably a year and a half, maybe two years old. Um the upper village of Falcon Crest almost. You can see this house I actually had built at the same time as that one. You can tell because of these trap doors. I don't really do this anymore. Um, you can look inside. It's it's kind of a similar plus pattern almost to some of the older houses here. Um, 
And this is an older house, but these are all sort of the, uh, this, this is probably more indicative of my style nowadays. Uh, I love doing texturing with the walls to make things interesting still. Um, I feel like this block palette is a lot less busy. There is still a bit of color um, going on, especially in the roof too. Uh, the plant boxes, I think, bring some life to the build, especially, you know, having these small little gardens out here brings a little bit of green to an otherwise, you know, very, very dreary uh, brown thing. Um, but yeah, you can also see I, I, uh, I experimented with the build style a lot. Um, this was an experiment that I tried, basically all cobblestone walls, and I didn't like it that much, so I never did it again. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I do have intentions to sort of spread the village out to this area even further, keep it going. Um, but, I don't know, I, I felt like this area was pretty developed, and I wanted to start focusing on the other area of Falcon Crest. This is the upper village, so to speak, um, and the lower village we'll get to in a bit. Um, but I guess I'll keep moving down this way to the docks of Falcon Crest. We can see here, this was sort of intended to be... This was sort of supposed to be more of a... Uh, more of like an upper class area-ish. I don't know, kind of. Doesn't really fit the vibe, really, but you know, whatever. This is supposed to be like a, like a trading area, right? You can see merchants, imagine, I should say. Merchants setting up their, their booths here to sell goods, right? Gold or whatever was gonna get sold here or here or whatever. Um, some logs potentially for sale or for shipping. Uh, and you'd ship or receive your goods from the port of Falcon Crest, which is just one ship. <laughs> Uh, with no interior, of course, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, lots of things don't have an interior, and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> but I still think it's a cool ship. I don't know, it looks nice. Uh, yeah, I like the shape. That's a little weird now that I'm looking at it, but, eh, you know, whatever, right? It, uh, I don't know, I still think it looks nice. This was sort of my first um, terraforming-ish project, kind of, uh, on, on a larger scale, obviously. Um to sort of make a stony beach-esque build. Um, I think it worked out well. I think it... I, I've considered extending this out and over to this whole area over here. I've decided against it for now. Oh, crap. Uh, I've decided against it for now. Maybe that's something I'll do in the future, but I do like sort of having this, like, more wooded area, maybe. Um, well, not maybe. It is more wooded area. Um, so, so, yeah. Um... This, this fountain, I think, is cool. I like this fountain. Um, let's get an above angle of it. Um, oh, I, I like the floor pattern. This was I built this right after they had added um, waterlogged stairs and slabs and stuff, so I really wanted to create an intricate pattern of a fountain. Um, and I think I did a pretty good job of it. I'm happy about it. Um, I think it works well. I guess this is the time that I should mention, I do have cheats on in this world, so you just saw I switched into creative mode, or spectator mode there. I have them on um, because I really like spectator mode. I think it's a great feature that lets me look at builds in a way that I wouldn't really be able to, I could see in survival, but it would just take so much time that uh, it's meh. And I don't think spectator mode, so long as I'm not using it to like look at caves and stuff like that. Oh, it's a secret area. What the heck is this? Oh, oh yeah, 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 I knew that was there. <laughs> Anyways, so long as I'm not using it to like look at caves and stuff like that, I'm perfectly fine with using spectator mode. I don't know. I, I use it to get a better view of my builds to see, you know, what's going on and, and look at it from different angles without having to do stupid BS in survival. Um, but yeah, this this area is supposed to be sort of a, a large storehouse for things going out to the boats. We got, we've got a crane here lowering supplies down to maybe a boat that I haven't built yet that's beside the point though uh <laughs> but yeah it's supposed to it's supposed to feel very much like you know they've got tons of little items stored and and they're gonna be shipped on boats and, and sent off out to the out to sea to different countries and this is out back apparently <laughs> um this was something i i built yeah uh, not too too long ago now but um it i think it replicates the original style of falcon crest in a way that makes me a bit happier with it, I think. I don't know. It, um, it is still pretty busy, but, uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Falcon Crest being a little busy in a lot of places. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the upper village of Falcon Crest. The lower village isn't too, too different, but, uh, let's avoid the animals because they're loud. Um, it just has a few views that I really, really like. Um, should I sleep? I think I should sleep. Uh, do I not have a bed? I don't have a bed in my ender chest. Goodness gracious. Not bad at the game. 
I thought I had one for sure, but... Um... I know I've got one here. Anyways, we, we took a look at the lower area of Falcon Crest. Um... Now it's time to... Or the upper area, I should say, of Falcon Crest. And now it's time to look at the lower area of Falcon Crest. That I, I just recently built this a few months ago. Over the summer, actually. Um... And I think it, uh... Yeah, I think it's got some nice views. I really love the terraining that I did here with all the flowers. I think it looks nice. Some of the angles of how houses just sort of peek around the corner at you, and you get some really cool views, I think, um, of these houses. And it's a style that I think, I mean, it's, you can tell it's very similar to the style over there. It essentially is the same thing, maybe a bit more detailed. Uh, some of the shapes are, are a little different of buildings, but... Um, but yeah, I really like this area. And it sort of feeds into... What, I, what I'm going to call, quote-unquote, downtown Falcon Crest. Um, I want this to sort of be, I'm not sure if I want it to feel more of like a townhouse, or really what feeling I'm going for here with the builds, but I want this to be sort of a more tightly packed area of the city. Um, you might notice, diamond block on the ground. That's a little strange. That's because this is actually the spawn point of my world. So these chunks are always loaded. I spawned in right around here, and... Uh, Clearly didn't travel too far before building anything in the world, but, you know, that's fine. Um, so yeah, I wanted to put sort of a bigger city kind of here that still matches the, the feeling and style of Falcon Crest, but gives it a bit more of a populated feeling, I, I, I guess. Um, and having, you know, a cool little town square here, uh, I think would be nice. You can see I've laid out some roads. I, I don't, you know, I, I like to work on things in creative a lot beforehand, before I sort of start building in survival. Um... And I haven't come up with something that I'm really happy with yet for this area. So, yeah. This weird looking thing used to be my iron farm. We'll talk about my need for iron a bit later, but I am running low, as you can see. Only a few stacks of blocks there, and then I don't think there's, there's a lot of poppies, but I don't know. I have a few stacks of iron blocks lying around all over the place, but it's it's not enough. Uh, especially when you need to do a big project with lots of hoppers or something like that. That, you know, iron, that shit goes, <laughs> that shit goes so fast. Um, yeah, so I talked a little bit about the birthday of my world. The birthday of Minecraft is May 17th, uh, 2009. Uh, so I built this little thing not too long ago. Um, wow, that actually feels so much longer than it. <laughs> wow. Huh. Jeez, I didn't realize that was two years ago. Wow, I, this, I felt like I built this thing yesterday. <laughs> but, no, it shouldn't be there. Um... But, but, uh, but yeah, I've started trying to do more things like this in the world, little memorials, um, and I think I will end up b building a memorial for this little world tour, maybe I'll show you guys that at the end of the video if I, if I feel like I have time to do that or whatever, but, um, yeah, building little memorials into the world, uh, and so that when I go through and explore it, I forget little things like this sometimes, you know? I can't remember everything that goes on in the world, uh, and when I do come back and get to see it, and, and you know, I have this cool memorial, this cool flashback of, oh, I do remember that, or, oh, that was so cool, or... You know, so it's it's something that I've tried to do more of in the world here. Oh, but now we've flown up to the top, the top of this mountain, which I did have to terraform a good amount. You can sort of see my handiwork a bit. I didn't make it big enough. <laughs> I since expanded the size of the castle, but, you know, a lot of this is terraformed up. Uh, I need to make it bigger, clearly. Um, but yeah, Falcon Crest Castle. I, I, I know I had mentioned that I, I felt kind of unsatisfied by uh, that that castle, quote-unquote, over there, and I wanted to build something that maybe looks more like a typical castle, which is where this build comes in. Um, it's still incredibly, incredibly unfinished, um, as we can see from well, the fact that I don't have a window there and anything over there, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, actually, we'll go to it now. It is, it is a very, very unfinished build. Um, it's supposed to lead to the outdoors, it does. Um, you can see I've got sort of things laid out for what I want each room to be. This is supposed to be the new throne room. Um, but so much of this feels like I want to change it, right? This doesn't feel like a throne room. This isn't grand enough. This needs to be longer and bigger, and... I don't know, that, that is one thing that kind of happened with this castle, is the scale of it expanded so quickly to be so much bigger than I originally intended it to be. Um, but, you know, I've got... I've got areas laid out later around of, of what I want different uh, parts of this castle to be. If I, oh yeah, well, jeez. If I uh, head up here a bit, we can see this is the alchemy room, or I think there's a uh, there's something else. The king's quarters are over here. Hallway to the observatory. Oh, that's right. I wanted to put an observatory tower up here. That's right. 
so many ideas for this place that I, uh, I just haven't had time to, to go through and, and really pull off, um, yet. So this is supposed to be the king's, or maybe the, the, this is supposed to be the king's room, I think. Yeah, the king's room. Um, so yeah, a very, very unfinished project, but, uh, a cool project nonetheless that I, I can, I come back to and work on every once in a while. Um, I haven't shown you one of my favorite views in Falcon Crest yet, which is in the castle. Um, doo -doo -doo. here we go. This is a nice view, I think. It's pretty cool. Not my favorite. I like some of the views from up above here. But, like, this gives you a really cool view. If this beacon wasn't here, <laughs> would give you a cool view. I really like some of these peek-throughs here are, are, are nice. You get to see sort of just like a, 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 a slim view of Falcon Crest. Um, and then this is probably my favorite view. I think you can see the lower village down there, even, you know, the upper village sprawling into the fog, into the mist. And then, you know, the old castle there, obviously very prominent. The ship peeking over the mountain there, and eventually you're going to be able to see downtown Falcon Crest as it sort of sprawls out and, and starts to take up more of this area. Oh, I just think it's going to be so cool. <laughs> as you can see, I've got a lot of ideas for this 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 world, a lot of which are, are incomplete and a lot of which I haven't even started yet. Um, but if, you know, if you've got any ideas watching this, anything you want, you know, you think, oh, wow, it'd be so cool if you did this, Quinn. Uh, throw them in the comments. I'll read through them. I'll tell you if they're dog shit or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I think um, this world's really cool. I've, I've got a lot of ideas for it, and I'd be interested to see what uh, what some of you guys have to say about my world, whether or not you like it, if you think it's cool, if you think it looks dumb. Um, yeah, got cool ideas for it. No idea what I want to do up here. <laughs> there's just there's so much that I just uh, I'm not 100% sure on, and I've torn down this front gate probably 20 times. I, I cannot get something that I like with the front gate of Falcon Crest Castle. But, now that we've gone through the castle, that actually about does it for Falcon Crest. Or at least the above ground part of Falcon Crest. So the next area of the world here that I'm going to be showing is a little something I call the Underground. Um, name kind of pending. I don't know. I don't love, I don't, I'm not in love with that name at all by any means. Uh, it has this very, it's, it's down here beneath Falcon Crest Castle that we just saw. Uh, it has this very unassuming little door here that you'd think, oh, you know, it's, oh, oh it looks like a, a decently sized little cavern. Uh, and then you walk in and you think, oh, wow, this, yeah, this is pretty big, you know, like, this must have taken you a while to dig out, Quinn. Uh, and then I'd say, yeah, but I'd tell you to look down. <laughs> Fall into the depths of the underground. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a big fucking cave. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I'm, like I said, not in love with the name of the underground, that's sort of what I just refer to it as. Um, if you have a good name for this place, let me know. Um, but, yeah, the underground. Um, all of this is hand dug, I did not use TNT at all in anything that you see down here, unless, you know, that wing. That wing doesn't count, we'll get to that wing momentarily, but all of this is hand dug. Um, this is about... 50 blocks, um, or 100 blocks, I guess, in diameter, um, given that the range of a beacon is about 50 blocks, so 50 blocks that way, 50 blocks that way, 50 blocks that way, 50 blocks that way. Um, and the original intention of this was, I, I, I don't even remember when I started this project. It was not was while I was in high school, so at least two or three years ago. And uh, the original... Oh, I can't believe I just missed that job. Um, the original intention was to sort of make an underground city down here, right? So I would dig this huge cylinder down into the earth, and then you'd be able to build all kinds of little huts into the walls. If, you, if you've read Red Rising, or if you've seen Gurren Lagann, sort of like the, the homes of those protagonists, right? Like Simon or um, Daro, right? Sort of like their hometowns, with lots of little little buildings dug into the walls and stuff like that. Um, then I realized that takes a lot of work. you got to dig out a fuckload of space for that. Um, and I didn't really want to do that necessarily uh I, I got a little bit tired of it i guess um after digging out a lot of it this area this is this this project has been going on for a very long time now um and so i ended up just kind of capping it off making this sort of a cavern and i decided that it would really be more so um the king's treasury for falcon crest right you can sort of see like this 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 cone or this bowl here the intention would be i want to fill this up with diamonds and, and sort of make this like a treasury that we have oh, oh god stupid fish um 
and ha yeah, anyways, have treasures scattered around this area uh, that, that the King of Falcon Crest maybe wants to keep secret or hidden. Which is why it's sort of uh, underneath the King's Castle a bit, right? So this is that area, and uh, here's the castle. So it is close, and if the King's Quarters are about here, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to dig a little hole down and end up, you know, down here. So the King would have access to this area. Um... This little contraption here is an automatic sorting system that sorts out... I don't have any stone because I use it all. Um, a lot of the items that you'd get while mining, right? So there's diamond ore, lapis, coal, all that good stuff. Um, which is what... You know, it's just some really basic item filters down there. But it's what this aqueduct gets used for. So after I dug this area out, I realized, damn, I, you know, I need more stone. <laughs> kind of. Uh, and... So I put this little aqueduct in, which which lets me keep mining in a given direction. If I set up another beacon, I think you can see another beacon over there. But um, if I set up another beacon, I can keep mining and then just throw items in here, and it all gets collected into one centralized storage system. Um. So so yeah, that was that was neat, and that worked for a bit. Uh, and then I sat there and thought, you know, hmm, that giant hole is really cool. I could put so many cool things in it, but I already have a good idea for it, and it doesn't have a good location. So let's make another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is exactly what I did. Another hole. Not quite as big as the other one. I think it's only about 30 blocks each direction, if I remember correctly. Um, actually, I think it is the full 50 this way, but I don't think it's only 30. I mean, it is a bit overly, you can kind of see. Um, the second hole the, oh, doesn't really have much in it as of, as, of, uh, as of now. You can see I do have some markings on the ground. The intention of this spot is that it is directly under downtown falcon crest where that circle was before hmm interesting if you remember what i told you a bit earlier downtown falcon crest is centered kind of whoop, is centered on the spawn chunks of the world so the intention for this area would be different farms would occupy areas down here and i could have them running at all times in my world whenever i'm on so that i'm always collecting more resources of you know whatever i want to have down here so you know Potato care. Well, that would be potato. That would be carrot. This would be sugar cane. Maybe cactus farm over here. I wanted to put an iron farm down there or in here somewhere. Uh, so it's still a project that I, I think I want to do. Um, I'm not 100% certain yet which farms I want to put down here and how I really want this all to work out. But um, just lag purposes, thinking about, you know, I don't want to lag the world too, too poorly. But yeah, cool little... Uh, a little area down there. I thought that actually little is very, very big. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll notice there's one more little passageway here off of the main cavern that takes me to. Well, I almost hit that. This another giant hole. I have a lot of holes in this world. This one looks a bit uh, rectangular though. Um, do I have? Oh, you want to see something cool? Boom. <laughs> What I made here, some of you might be able to tell already. I'm going to... I thought I had potions here. Do I have potions? I don't want to brew potions. Um, just because we're on a world tour, I will... How do I do this? Wait, hundreds and hundreds. Um, yeah, just because on a world tour, I'll do night vision now instead of going and brewing a potion. But yes, you might tell what this is. It is, in fact, a world eater. Um, yeah. This thing is really cool. <laughs> um, it is uh, basically a slime block flying machine that when I hit this note block over here, I really hope this doesn't break. It actually might. Um, who knows? I hit this note block over here. TNT gets duplicated on all of these edges, and then it gets sent across into the wall. It explodes. I can I can run through this area here and uh, catch up the lava um, and find diamonds. Hey! Awesome. Diamonds. I am wide those. Why not, right? Oh, oh crap. <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, pick me. Um, okay, yeah. You need know, search. Typically, I'd run through, with, through here with night vision and, and speed potions. Uh, I need more diamond. Uh, there we go. Boop, boop. Um, that's a bit odd. So I got a double vein. Oh, that's awesome. Um, that was a strange noise. <laughs> um, but yeah, the World Eater. Very interesting, right? Very cool. Um, a lot of work. Unfortunately, will be made irrelevant in the next update, which is why I am still currently in 1.16.5. Uh, 
<laughs> because diamonds will get moved to another level and um, the world leader won't be able to be used anymore, which kind of sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to get as much usage out of it as I can while the update still exists. Oh, now I'm out of night vision. Oh well. So we are now leaving the underground to go to a little spot that some of the more obscure observant, not observant, but observant viewers might have already noticed. This little cloud in the sky. I, uh, I don't play with clouds on in my world just because I think they're a bit annoying, but too low for my liking. Can I make it? Awesome. So I built this little cloud up here, you know, I can get an overlook from top down, you know, a top down view of Falcon Crest. You know what? I'm now realizing I never explained the super smelter down here, did I? Let's go down and do that real quick, shall we? So this super smelter is a super smelter that no longer works, which is why I didn't describe it or, or talk about it at all, because I don't use it anymore. Um, it's based off of an old mechanic called zero ticking, which some of you who are more familiar with the game of Minecraft might, might know what that is, but basically, you push these blocks back and forth really, really quick, and whatever you have planted on them grows really quick. So this super smelter basically used a bunch of bamboo in here, Bamboo would grow really quick, get pushed off into these this hopper chain here, and it would fill up the furnaces, which would then output all the items down here. Do you still have bamboo? No, no bamboo, but it's tons of sand still, huh? Um, anyways, then all those items would get, you know, into the water streams here and get outputted in, you know, tons of smooth stone, apparently. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't work anymore, like I said, because they took zero ticking out of the game, but, um... Yeah, I just haven't gotten around to removing this thing at all. <laughs> I never even got around to finishing the exterior of it before they removed it from the game. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's wonderful. But anyways, let me make it. Now we are going to the Nether. My Nether is not all that interesting. I uh, I recently reset it for 1.16 with the Nether update. Um, so, there's not anything interesting. Well, there is. We'll go there eventually. Um, there's only one interesting thing below the surface of, of, of uh, or below the roof of the nether, that is, and we'll get to that in a bit. But this sort of shows off a bit about the shape of my world. If you remember the lake in the middle, the lake is kind of the center piece of the world, almost. Uh, we've got Falcon Crest here, and I think we're going to work our way around this way. Um, around this sort of semicircle here, visiting each of the portals. Uh, I do have some bridges here, some boat bridges that you can take. The ice spike biome is not interesting at all. There's, it's just an ice spike biome. You can find those anywhere. I've just ripped it to shreds. <laughs> um, but the next place to visit is Eresia. Um, which you should have actually... You know what? No, we're not going to go to Eresia. We're going to go to the slime farm. Yeah, slime farm. Um, yeah, we'll show this off real quick, because I think Aresia is a longer segment, so I'll do this one next. Um, but yeah, the slime farm. It is very close to Falcon Crest, as you can see. <laughs> so again, here's the lake in the middle. Here's the, I think this is what, this is east, right? Yeah, east, west. Aresia is right there, and then we'll get to what's in the, in the, uh, in the south in a bit. But yeah, slime farm. Um, also incredibly incomplete, but what I do have, I really like. I like how the slime comes out of the mountain. You can sort of see it's crystallized in this in the side here. Um, the farm itself works. The farm itself is complete. Why did I drop that? Yeah. Uh, you can see that you know it it produces a good amount of slime. Um, but the exterior for the farm certainly is not complete. Um, you kind of see where I was going with this tree here, a very lime, you know, lots of limey leaves, a sort of a, a white bark, but I didn't want to use birch because it's, it's birch. Uh, <laughs> I thought bone blocks would be kind of a cool, I mean, yeah, I think it works all right. If I were to actually finish it, I think it would look a lot cooler. But the idea here was that it was sort of a willow tree almost, and that there was maybe some ravine or some almost like a hot spring from Yellowstone um, of slime kind of bubbling up to the surface. And maybe there's a small village that... Maybe lives in this area around here, and then why is this? Huh? This is very strange. This is a mountain's biome, but this grass is different colored. Huh? 
That's weird. Another weird oddity of the world, I guess. Uh, um, but yeah, maybe there's there's a mountain village here that, that, that lives from the heat of the slime or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I didn't have a, a totally concrete idea of what I wanted to do with this place. And when I was building it, I didn't have enough slime to finish covering it. So I sort of just left the whole project unfinished. Um, that's kind of just how it's been. <laughs> but that is what rests on the east side of the nether. Um, figured I could get that quick stop out of the way before we go to Eresia. This is probably my favorite area in my world. I absolutely love the block palette of Eresia. I think it's gorgeous and it's really cool. Um, some of you might be able to actually recognize one of this, the buildings here. Eresia, here it is. I will actually fly this way. We really didn't need to take the nether. Uh, just cause everything actually is really close. This Falcon Crest is right here. It's like, I mean, it is all. I mean, it's right next to each other. But this is the city of Eresia. I'll give a little bit of a fly through, and then we'll look at some of the specific buildings I want to talk about. Um, but this is, was supposed to be more of like a mercantile city, almost. Um, I wanted this, you know, the, it wasn't supposed to necessarily feel like a kingdom. It wasn't supposed to be a castle or anything here, but this was supposed to be you know, a bustling, popular city. And uh, I think it has a nice effect. I, I, I love, like I said, the build palette. The colors are so cool, I think. Um, this was supposed to be like the, you know, the port of Aresia almost. It was like a customs building sort of thing where, you know, you, uh, you would check in with whoever's here, provide your documentation, and then you'd be able to access the country or the city of Aresia. Um, when I mentioned that some of you might be able to recognize one of the buildings, this would be that building um and it is also the uh the reason why this area is named Eresia after a certain uh friend of mine named eric <laughs> i played on a minecraft server a while ago oh you don't talk about the back but you know it's fine uh <laughs> i played on a minecraft server a while ago with the uh disciples of eric and um when i rebuilt i, I built this structure on that survival world survival, survival server i should say and I loved it, so I really wanted to bring it into my single-player world, so I rebuilt it here. And I decided to name this city after the server from which its main building was was uh, built from, and named it Aresia. So this is my main storage room in the world. It is a multi-item sorter, which what that means is I can input any items I want here. Oh, not shoulder box. Any items I want here, and they'll get filtered out of this chest and sent up into the appropriate chest here. Um, so, yeah, it, it sorts as many items as you want it to into as many different slots as you want it to. Um, which is really cool. The problem is, is that it doesn't work super well. <laughs> um, this is not a system that I designed. I can show you the redstone down here. I just built it. Um, but it gets backed up a bit sometimes, as you can see. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't quite work all the time, and I have to come in and kind of clear it out. And now it'll start chugging through again and actually, you know, start sorting items. But you can see it, it gets clogged up every once in a while, right? Who doesn't get clogged up every once in a while, huh? Um, but yeah, it's not a good system. <laughs> and I want to redo it. I don't think I want to put another storage room here, though. Um, I think I want to have oh, a different area. Jesus. A different area for storage. But for now... This is my main storage room. Uh, I'll flex diamonds on you, two stacks of blocks. I have a ton more in the underground. We already saw that, but, you know, just flex on them a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is sort of where I spend a lot of my time gathering resources. I've got um, a wall of shulker boxes over there and just some random bits and bobs around the place. of random, who knows, like, I don't know what the heck's going on here. <laughs> um, these are like my extra shulker boxes, a bunch of stone buttons. Um, my project board of a bunch of things that I want to do. Finish. That should be Falcon Crest. Um, the auto smelter. Farms at spawn. You can see some of the ideas I've talked about. I've since moved this to Trello just because I think it's easier. I don't always have to be in the world to talk about my ideas for it. Um, but the other important project here is these four boxes of ancient debris that are very, very empty. Uh, that I want to fill up. That I can get a netherite beacon at some point. That is something that I definitely want to do in this world. Uh, because I think that would be really, really cool. Um, so yeah, the upstairs of this building, 
It's not fully furnished, as you can see, the, the interior leaves something to be desired in a lot of places, but what you can see on a normal day-to-day -day basis, I really like. This was supposed to be uh, an auto-smelting system, which, you know, I suppose it is an auto-smelting system, but it's not a very good one. Um, so I really don't know what I'm going to do with this back room yet, still. Um, yeah, who knows, right? So, uh, most of the interior of this place is done. The, I think, again, we don't talk about the back, but, uh, for the most part, yeah, it's pretty complete. I think there used to be a doorway here. I don't know if I can still get back here or not. I can! Yeah, so you can sort of see the bowels, uh, an old AFK fissure right there. Uh, you can see the bowels of this of the sorting system, kind of, uh, the behind the scenes bit of it. But, this is supposed to be a stairwell up. Um, oh, one of my favorite views in Aresia is right outside this door over here. Um... This is when I started taking more of a push to, like I, I, like I said, I, I'm doing this recently in the world, really start terraforming a bit more, include some bushes and flowers, and, and I just love how, you know, you, if you, you walk through here, you walk around this corner, you see that waterfall kind of poke out, and then just sort of appears, and I don't know, the, the, the trees, I can imagine the leaves swaying in the wind with the lanterns up, and just kind of, you know, plop here, and uh, it's just so peaceful. I don't know, I, I, I just, I love this area so much, this area makes me really happy, this whole kind of stretch of land here. But I will head back out, I suppose, to... This is sort of the main gate over there. It was, well, that was the main gate. And here, you know, we've walked along this passage here to get to the beach. Um, more of my terraforming. You can kind of see terraforming the sand a bit to make it kind of more... Um, I don't know, a bit, a bit more interesting than just a pile of sand, you know. Um, and then this. This is another great view. Arisi has so many good views. I love lots of them. Um cows in that building that's an inn some of these are supposed to just be houses but i don't know i just i love the feeling of walking along this canal um kind of a canal it's more of like a lake actually i guess but whatever yeah just kind of walking around seeing the sights of you know these houses i guess <laughs> um this should be closed none of them have interiors of course because well actually they have some walls but you know why would they I'm supposed to have walls uh why would they have interiors right <laughs> Who needs interiors? I don't. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like this area. I like this spot too. I really like how the sand terraforming turned out here. Um, if I come back here... Oh, I should get more rockets out of my inner chest really quick. Uh, Oop, bop. Well, we'll just take it all the way. Why not, right? There we go. Um, yeah, the, you know, we've sort of got like a canal walk... Or not a Oceanside, pure walkway almost, where you can sort of walk along to this tower here that is supposed to be like a guard tower with a bridge out to the the, the, the land over there. Didn't finish that, but that's, you know, that's beside the point, right? Can I get... Oh, no, I can't. I'm dumb. Um, so yeah, a lot of these houses don't have interior... Well, none of them have interiors, actually, but I still like them a lot. Um, and I think they help this sort of... I don't know. It, it feels very different than Falcongo. It feels more alive, sort of more lived in, I guess. Um, and, I, and I really like that feeling. So this dome, you know, I sort of replicated after that dome and the pseudo dome over there. Um, but I, I never built something like a, almost like a like a pantheon or a pantheon, the um, Parthenon. Thank you. Uh, except circular. Kind of, the, you know, a lot of the pillars. You can tell a lot of Aresia is kind of inspired a bit by Greek or Roman architecture. We have this, you know, the waterway in the middle here. These pillars. There's more pillars on the buildings over there that you can, well, you know, we'll get to eventually. But um, yeah, this is sort of a nice place. This originally was going to be the location of the end, uh, the Nether portal. I'll show you where I ended up putting that. But down here is just empty for now. Um, but. Uh, I do, I really love how Aresia is all connected by, by road, and there's multiple ways to sort of get through any given spot, right? So I, I've laid out a lot of roads here, um, to get around the city. Uh, actually, I, I like this view, though, so I'm gonna take this one. <laughs> uh, just getting to see the bank of Aresia come into view. So the idea with this place was that it was more focused on trading, um, and, 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 and industry, not industry, uh, yeah, just trading, um, more than Falcon Crest, which would be a very, you know, industry, we're gonna mine, we're gonna get logs, we're gonna do this, that, you know. Aresia is is focused on trading, um, was sort of the idea, the lore in my head for this place. Uh, and you can see that this is... Sp Hello? They look like they're having a great conversation. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I like this area. This is supposed to be, you know, the residential area was back over there, sort of. Um, we'll get to the religious area, kind of, over there in a little bit. But this was supposed to be, like, the uh, the marketplace area. We've got the bank overlooking in the background and all of these shops. These actually, most of this one doesn't have an interior, but the rest of them do. Um, you know, a clothing store here that has, you know, all of these items for display. And, you know, maybe somebody lives up here. Uh, they can't live up here, but whatever. Um, leave that open. No, leave that one. Ah, that one open. Um, yeah, you know, we've got a, a clothing store here that's supposed to be an armory. You can see there's kind of a forge that I built out the back that I never finished doing um <laughs> very common theme in the world if you haven't noticed it already we've got the botanist oh sorry friend the botanist here with their with their greenhouse and this is supposed to be sort of like a like a bookstore with all of these you know these rows and aisles of books that you can sort of just wander through and and you know figure out you know oh what's it rotten flesh is in here oh wow you know <laughs> um there's a nice what does this say flower shop yeah a nice cafe here where people can get uh, can order their food, and you know, got a little kitchen in here, and, and uh, yeah, you know, you can order some food, bring a little bit of color to the to the city that otherwise is pretty, you know, stuck in this kind of yellowy brown uh, palette almost. Um, and then there's the bank, the bank of Aresia. This is one of my favorite builds. I absolutely love this thing. It is so cool. Although I have definitely obscured the view with these buildings, it is still such a, I, I don't know, it's such a cool building. Um, some statues there looking over the, the emeralds of profit that they've made. Um, one of the things I challenged myself with with this build was to build on diagonals, which you can see I think was, was pretty successful here. Um, and, it, and it ended up creating a really interesting shape for this building that I am super happy with. Um, so yeah, the bank is not really a bank, but it's my villager trading hall. Um, so I've got, you know, if this is the bank, this is my this is my little Ryan friend over here, who's the slave of the bank. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are all, all my librarians. I can get, you know, what, mending for one emerald. Obviously, you know, I've got some, you can see the, the zombie. Zombie and, um, I don't remember who's over here. Are you Alfonso? Where are you, my friend? Um, I do this. Can I get your name? Zombie. All right, never mind. I thought I named them. Funny names, but I didn't. But yeah, all the books you could ever ask for in here. I've got a little bit. Uh, I've got some extras over here of just random, you know, who knows what. And then this is actually the system to uh, to get new villagers. So I have a villager breeder, which we'll see a bit later. Um, but I can sit here and uh, I don't need any more farmers. So I want to show the system off, buddy. I'm sorry. There we go. Um, I'll return you to the repository there and get a new hire. That's what, you know, I'll get a little some signs. I'm like a hiring manager of the bank here, uh, looking for some new employees. So, you know, the villager comes over, they'll eventually end up picking up their workstation from this, you know, whatever block is here, and I can cycle through their trades until I get something I'm happy with, at which point I can hit the button over there to send them off, which uses... Whoa, why are... Okay, friend. Um... Use just the minecart magic here to, to suck the minecart down um, and send it off depending on where I want it to go. There's, you know, some redstone here that happens with determining, uh, you know, do I want to send it to the bulk trading units or the, the librarian trading hall? Um, so, yeah, this is sort of my, my god machine is what it, what it would have been called back in the day. Some personal quarters that didn't get finished, that's beside the point. <laughs> um... And I think this is just a little storage closet for, like, yeah, I've got some, some name tag. Farmer! Oh, okay. Anything else interesting here? No. Um, there's a little supply closet back here, just, you know, random goodies. Who knows what's back there. Um, and then as we travel up, we can see the bulk trading units. I'll actually take you to the modern design of the bulk trading units that I'm using, which would be this. So a lot, a lot of villagers. <laughs> um... And the reason why I have this here is because I need golden carrots. And I need a lot of them. <laughs> a lot, a lot of golden carrots. Um, so I utilize these good friends here to uh, to get all of my golden carrots. Uh, and then I store them in my end chest and I can access them from any time. Um, here is sort of that, the, yeah, again, the kind of the pillar. I don't know, this feels very European to me. It's open air. I don't, I don't know. Just It's, it's so cool. <laughs> this was the old design that I had for bulk trading units that didn't work. Oh, hello. 
didn't work super well um, because, you know, I, I would wrap the kind of the area here in their workstations, but then you can't really choose which villager. It's hard to kind of get around, you know, this guy might move around on me or whatever, and it becomes difficult to pick out the specific villager that you want. Um, so that's why I've transitioned to that, that system you've seen over here. Um, but, oh, I guess the basement is not relevant at all because I didn't put anything here. <laughs> uh, eventually, I want to put an emerald vault because uh, I have a few emeralds um, from the trading hall. Well, you didn't come the right bot. There we go. I do eventually want to do an emerald vault. Um, probably, I, I think I want to do like a passcode lock or something of my own design. So designing an actual redstone contraption here um, to keep everything safe underground, keep my riches safe. Um, and yeah, so Aresia is definitely not complete. You can see I have roads going off in different directions here, and it's something that I, I want to expand to make it feel more of like, not a metropolis, but like a big city. Um, so, you know, I want to continue the houses in through this area. You can see I cleared out all the trees to have houses all through here. Um, probably some more houses on this side uh, of the main kind of strip here as well. Probably going up to the river, if I'm being honest. Um, so populating that whole area as sort of, you know, a marketplace here, maybe some more residential uh, areas here and, and here. Um, and I mentioned this was supposed to be kind of like the religious district of Aresia. Um, I wanted this, this, these, the, the people that live here to be, have some kind of religion, right? Something to do with the end stone, something that they, that they worship the end almost, uh, was my thought process. And, um, I, I originally wanted the Villager Trading Hall, that's what that, that kind of, this the nether portal, by the way. Um, that's what I, I had originally wanted this sort of weird square over here to be, was the Villager Trading Hall, but I've since decided to shift this part of the city to be, like I said, more religious in nature. And maybe to have, originally I, I was thinking, okay, maybe I can put a big statue or some, some artifact up there on that hill, and you could have sort of like a sky bridge up to it or something like that, so... Lots of ideas for this area here. Um, what exactly will go here, I don't know. And, you know, we'll have to wait and find out. But, uh, yeah, Aresia. Still lots of ideas for this area. Still lots to do. Um, like a shipyard I wanted to do here, but there's just not enough space for it. Um, yeah. I don't know. This is this is probably my favorite. I just, I love the build style, and I love some of the angles and views that you can get. Just sort of roaming through the city. Um... And that's why I, I also want to expand the size of the city, right? So there's more to roam, uh, and there's more to see as you kind of walk around this this area. But um, the parts of it that are complete are parts that I really, really like, that I, I, you know, I love. I love this area here. I love kind of this water canal here. Um, yeah, this is probably my favorite big city project in, in the world. Huh. I'm looking a little low on, on rockets here. If only, if only I... Ignore the storage system. If only I had some way to get more rockets. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, you just craft rockets with paper and gunpowder. If only there was... Let me get that. If only there was some way for me to get a lot of gunpowder. Huh. Oh, that did not work well. <laughs> if only, if only there were some way for me to get gunpowder. Uh, that is the next place. We are going to be visiting where I get all my gunpowder from, and it's another build, just came into view, where I absolutely love the block palette. And it's something that I don't think I've seen this exact palette anywhere else before, and I think it works really, really well. Uh, so for those of you who can't tell already, uh, nine, there we go. You can't tell already, this is a witch farm. A, actually, it's a double witch hut farm, so there's one hut here. One hut here, and another hut over there. Um, and yeah, basically the way that this farm works is you can see down here, all of this area is completely lit up. Um, and then, you know, some of this too. And then this is all slapped, so mobs can't spawn anywhere on this island. They obviously can't spawn in the water. I guess drowned could, but I don't think they do that in the swamp. Um, so there's no places for mobs to spawn once I go up here to my AFK point at the top of the tower. Um, right in here. Bonk my head a little bit. There we go. So once I'm here, um, I have, let me see if I actually show you guys this, because this might be cool for some of you that 
um, blue sphere that have never seen a spawning sphere before. Uh, so that that what little slash function thing I just did is a data pack I have installed on my world that lets me see the uh, spawning sphere of where mobs can spawn, uh, given that a player is standing at a certain point here. This is the center. Um, so mobs will spawn in an 180, well, 128, geez, block radius away from the player. So basically what I do is I stand here, and then everything within the spawning sphere is lit up, and even a little bit outside of it, but, you know. So nothing within the spawning sphere of my AFK spot is spawnable. So basically what'll happen is, that means that on the only spots mobs can spawn are either if there's caves underground, which... I think I lit up most of them. Yeah, you can see all the caves down here are lit up. So they can either spawn there, or they can spawn in the actual farm. And once they spawn here, you know, the tripwires trigger. Oh yeah. I get in here a little bit. Tripwires trigger, the water in these trap doors gets released, the witches get witches get pushed here, and then they come down and die of entity cramming, I think. Right? Yeah, entity cramming. Uh, and then all of their loot gets sent into, not this area, geez, uh, here. The storage system. Oh, here, let me get all the spawning sphere removed. Oh, blue sphere. Let's get rid of the sphere. There we go. Just so it's not gross. Um, but yeah, this building. So that, you know, that's the basics how the farm works. And then I just needed an area for the, uh, all the drops to get collected. So I figured, huh. I'll build a, a really cool, like, witch's tower. If any of you have ever seen um, Attack of the B-Team, which I don't think anyone has. <laughs> it was a Minecraft series by B-double-O back in the day um, of a mod pack. And one of the players on that mod pack focused on a mod called Witchery. And he made, like, this huge witch's tower that, like, uh, some of the players on the server tried to attack. It was a really cool build. It was a really cool event. Um... So I sort of, I didn't model this after that, but it was definitely an idea inspired by that build, by Chimney Swift was the YouTuber, if you are interested to find out. Um, but yeah, interior. Got a little bonsai looking tree here. I already showed you guys the storage area. Um, you know, so I've got a little bit of gunpowder. Actually, not that much. Oh, I should read any day AFK here again sometime. Um, yeah, I use this, pretty much this, all of this for my, like, rocket crafting, or if I need, um... TNT for some reason, you know, it's about to come and get it. Uh, I don't need you anymore. Sorry, friend. Uh, this is the mm, actually semi-functioning uh, super smelter of my world. It runs based off of the sticks. Avoid the paper. The sticks that the witches will drop when they die. Um, and yeah, so the sticks will get passed to these furnaces. This one still has sticks. It's not great. Not a great system. Um, but yeah, then you can throw in items up here at the top. Let me see here. Yeah, throw in your items here, and then they get, uh, distributed out. So this still, you know, obviously, like, like, almost everything in this world, needs a little bit of work still. Um, but this farm actually does have, I mean, this interior is a bit incomplete, a bit bland. Um, but it actually does have some interior work done with, you know, a little, like, sacrificial altar or something, and there's some area for, like, herbs or... You know, I don't know what a witch might have necessarily, but yeah, who knows. Um, that area is decorated, and then the top area is decorated a little bit as well, I think. Um, yeah, so there's like, this area isn't decorated, but this has got some, you know, witchery, whatever nonsense going on here. And then a little bit of balcony. Um, but like I said, I absolutely love this build style. I think it's beautiful. Um, the block combination. I really don't like, I didn't really didn't like diorite, I should say, until they redid the texture, and I think the new texture is so phenomenal, and the way it just works with the warped wood and blackstone, I don't know, this is one of my favorite build styles, or build palettes, uh, and I'm really, really happy with how this build turned out. Um, but I actually, on a serious note, do need more rockets and food, so I should get that now. Um, I don't think I've talked about this yet, but um, I even have an ender chest here already. This is like my top recommendation, if you're looking for a recommendation, <laughs> of like important things to have in a Minecraft world. You absolutely, absolutely, if you want to have a world that lasts for a long time, you need to take advantage of your ender chest. It is amazing. It's goaded. Uh, I keep so much stuff in here. 
that's so useful. Sand, gravel, you know, you never know when you need sand or gravel. Food and rockets, extra tools. I don't know if I've shown this yet or not. Um, I have a few extra tools. <laughs> Silk Touch, Fortune, you know, you name it, I've got it. Uh, in case I... In case this pickaxe should be renamed to I Broke, I Broke, I Broke another pick. With a bunch of quotes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I break picks sometimes because I don't pay attention. <laughs> um, but yeah, it becomes super easy to come out here and just, you know, I have all, you know, if I need to build with some wood, oh, well, it's bits. If I need to build, you know, a little bit of, you know, I got some dark oak, I can, you know, place it down, do whatever, and I've got some, this needs to be restocked, but. Yeah, I think the Ender Chest is a super, super powerful thing that everyone should be taking advantage of if you want to have a long-term survival world. Um, but yeah, so that is about it for the Witch Farm. We're going to head back over to the main part of the world now that I've restocked on my rockets. Um, and we're actually going to head a bit past Eresia. Um, so this is, this is probably what, the most western or eastern? Yeah, eastern point in my world. And we're now going to head, we're going to work our way over to the westernmost point uh, of my world. I think it's the westernmost point. I'm actually not certain about that. Um, one thing you might have noticed is that it's nighttime and there are no mobs out here. Here we go. Here's the area I'm looking for. You might have noticed that it's nighttime and there are no mobs here. That's a bit strange, isn't it? So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, for the world tour, he's playing on peaceful. Uh, that's not true. I am on hard difficulty, as I always play on. Um, so you might be thinking, you know, what the heck's going on here? Uh, and the answer lies within this river that I actually built. <laughs> you heard me right, I built this river. Uh, originally, this sort of area here was, was, was naturally generated. And originally, the river just kind of took a turn here and went this way. Uh, but I decided that I wanted to extend it a bit. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and I built a river to send it back over here towards the uh, the center or the downtown area of Falconcrest. I did a lot of the terraining, as you can see, which I'm super, super happy with how this area turned out. Um, and it sort of winds its way in here to the uh, the downtown area of Falconcrest, or what will be the downtown area of Falconcrest. Um, so these these kind of mountainy hills were already here, but they, they leveled out uh, and I and I had to do a lot of modification. A lot of like the, the path was sort of already laid out a bit. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of what it kind of used to look like. Um, hmm. yeah, I'm not sure, but but you know what I we know we know what I'm talking about. Where it's like you know you've got two kind of hills, like almost like this is what is what that river area used to look like. And then so I had to sculpt the river down a bit, and then push these mountains to the side is basically what I did to this area over here. And I'm super, super happy with how it turned out. This area still needs a little bit of work. Um, I think the shape of the walls are, is pretty good. Uh, it's a little flat in some places, but, uh, you know, it could definitely could use some work. And this, this sort of military outpost is what I wanted to put here. So the idea would be that you'd have other nations come in here and maybe park, park their boats at this area, which is supposed to be sort of like a fishing town almost. So they'd, they'd park their boats here, maybe restock at some supplies, and then eventually sail into the main kingdom of Aresia. And this would sort of be like a military outpost to, you know, make sure that the kingdom is safe and that unwanted people weren't coming in. Um, but it is very bare at the moment, just some statues that I, I'm, eh, they're okay. Their heads are, look like arrows, but that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing in the river here, the man-made river, is this little glowing cave over here, which is very sort of it's hidden, it's out of the way, it doesn't really look like a whole lot of anything, but it is actually huge. This is such a wonderful addition to my world. Um, and it is what's called a mob switch. So you can see there's a bunch of zombies down here, and if I turn on chunk borders, you can see that this switch takes them from one chunk to another chunk. So I'll do that really quickly here and then head back outside. And I will explain what exactly oh, the deliver. What it, I'll explain what exactly is going on here. Uh, I'll take my chunks off. So if I head back outside, you can see the light is now turned off since the mob switch is now off. If I head back over to this area. It's pretty open, right? There should be some mobs here. And I land well, actually, I guess they're still loaded, now that I'm thinking about it. I should go over here. 
basically what's going on. Here we go. Now mobs are spawning. There's an Enderman. There's... I don't know. Another Enderman. Oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, mobs, where are you? Hello? I need to go farther away. Um, there we go. Now mobs are spawning. I saw a zombie down here. Yeah. Hi, friend. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, almost caught on fire. Basically, what's going on... Oh, is that chunk border that I showed you is actually the border between the spawn chunks and just the normal chunks of my world. Yeah, see, there's some spiders spawning. Um, so what's going on here is, if you remember... I'll go into spectator and get there faster. Uh, if you remember, this area here is the center of the spawn chunks of my world. So this cave here is on the border between the spawn chunks and the normal chunks of the world. If you don't know what the spawn chunks are, they're the chunks where you spawn. Um, and they have a special property that they are always loaded in the game. Uh, so what this contraption here does is it takes uh, the mob cap, 70, 70 uh, mobs, and moves them from outside the spawn chunks to inside the spawn chunks. So this way, when they're over here on this side, they are always loaded. Uh, and what that means is the game goes to check and see if it can spawn any mobs, and it finds out, oh, wait a second, like, I can't, <laughs> because there's already 70 mobs loaded, right? Um, so what this does is it literally turns off mob spawning, which is super, yeah, super, super nice. Um, especially when you have gear like this that, like, it just, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not going to die to anything, really, unless I'm being absolutely really dumb. Um... And mobs are sort of just an inconvenience at this point. Actually, no, I need, I need you to stay off. Sorry. Sorry, friends. You need to stay off. Um, you know, yeah, mobs are just an inconvenience unless I want to turn a mob farm on, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm turning off the mob cap so that my mob farms work. <laughs> um, but when I'm just out building and doing random, you know, whatever, it is much nicer to just have, you know, have mobs turned off, because... Well, I don't know. I don't want mobs to spawn while I'm building. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> so yeah, that is the mob farm. Or the mob switch, I should say. Of my world. And the man-made river. So, uh... Huh, hole in the ground. A little bit weird, right? <laughs> uh, and this area is unnaturally flat. I'm sure many of you can tell that I terraformed this, uh... Terraformed this up a good bit. Didn't finish it naturally. Why would I ever finish it? Um... The intention of what I was really going to put here was a big sort of farmhouse. I'd have a big farmhouse here with lots of like sprawling fields of wheat and potatoes and stuff. Uh, and then it would have like a, like a basement area that you could kind of come down into. Uh, and there'd be some storage here and stuff. And then, you know, we'll see what, what what's down there in a, in a moment. But that was the original intention. And then after I decided to sort of, you know, start putting up this, build a river, I felt like it didn't make a ton of sense, especially having a farmhouse right next to the ocean. Um, having the saltwater contaminate crops and all that. I feel like it just didn't logically make a whole lot of sense why somebody would build. Oh, wow. Build here? Um, so I, I sort of scrapped that idea, and what I've kind of gone with currently is that, that fishing village idea that I was talking about. So putting a lot of smaller houses around here. Um, but I still had things built underground here. Because uh, I needed a... Mm, villager breeder, which is what is down here. So this is what supplies all of the villagers for that trading hall that I showed you guys earlier. Basically what happens is, uh... Oh look, they're breeding right now. They will make love to each other, uh, sensually and carefully, of course. Uh, and then the baby is gonna see the bed. And the baby's gonna go, oh, I wanna go jump on the bed because I'm a little child. Uh, and then they try to run across. They think this trapdoor gap is something that they could get across. Uh, and so they run, fall into the water stream, and, uh, get taken away for a life of slavery. <laughs> So there's a couple babies in there that you can see. Eventually they'll grow up and kind of make their way over here. And we have a few, uh, few friends waiting to uh, take their journey over to the trading hall. You go through the redstone soup here a bit. Um, what happens is that, that this, this gateway will sort of open up and they will get sent into another portal and then eventually taken over to... Uh, using some minecart magic, they get taken uh, and put through another portal that ends up underneath the uh, the trading hall in Aresia. So this is where all the villagers come from. And this is a little area that... Well, actually, let me go up and show it to you. This is sort of was a prototype, almost, for what I wanted, or what I want the area under spawn to be like, right? So there's this one bridge in the middle, and you've got farms lining the walls, and 
there's, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on. You can look up and down, and there's, you know, plenty to look at and plenty of interesting things going on. Um, it's a bit of a strange. Okay. Um, but yeah, just some, some basic, I mean, sugarcane farms, melon and pumpkin farms. They, you know, they do good. They, I mean, they do good enough, right? I, uh, I come through here and empty them every once in a while, but, uh, but yeah. So this is sort of what I want the spawn area to be like, uh, one day. Obviously, much bigger, much bigger scale farms, and much, many more farms, I should say. Um, so, yeah. Cat? Hello, cat. Uh, this is a relic of the past. I'm sure many of you know what, what, what you're looking at right now, but for those of you who don't, this is an AFK fishing device. Do I have a, a fishing rod here? Um, God Rod. Dan's Rod. <laughs> Whoop. So what you would do, back in the day, is you'd sit here and do this and eventually you'd catch something and then you know it would get stuck up in the hopper and you just keep and sit here and you'd afk and just fish oh it should be like that um yeah so you just sit there and fish <laughs> and you'd get i mean lots of enchanted books lots of name tags a bunch of other random stuff um you know all kinds of good books uh, and this is, has unfortunately been patched out. Actually, it's very fortunate because it's broken and shouldn't have been in the game, but <laughs> it got patched out not too, too long ago now, actually. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of a relic of, of, of the past of what the game used to be like, Mr. Kitten. Um, as is this, this is one of those zero tick farms that I was talking about, except it was for sugarcane. So you'd move these grass blocks back and forth really, really quick. Um, how did I turn this thing on? Should have put a button or a lever somewhere. Um, I don't remember. But yeah, it would make sugar came really, really fast. So I didn't have a need necessarily for these farms because I could just turn this thing on for like 20 seconds and I'd get, you know, a sh uh, more more sugar cane than a man could ever ask for. Uh, well, that's actually not true because I am running on sugar cane, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um. Yeah, so the only couple other things in this area of the world are my bee area. So I have a slight setup for honey here. Uh, let me get some bottles, actually. Slight setup for some honey. Um, for those of you who know how bees work, you put some campfires under their hives so that you can harvest them and they don't get angry at you. Uh, and then you can just kind of come through here and yoink the honey out. So, uh... They kind of come over, pollinate on the flowers, and then return to their hives and, and make honey, which you can turn into honey blocks, or I think you can eat it or drink it or whatever, right? Kind of gross, but yeah. Um, let me put you guys back. Um, but yeah, the, the, the bees kind of require a bit of a a bit extra stuff. This is like a bee breeder, basically. So what'll happen is the bees will come out of their hives here. You can breed them, and then only the babies make it through to these flowers, and then they find their new hives here. Uh, and then you kind of have to, if you're not paying close attention, you might have to test a hive, which is what I'm doing in these sort of modules to make sure, okay, there actually are three bees in here, which is the maximum amount of bees. Um, so yeah, a very, very small, very, very small, low scale honey production that uh, I want to improve one day, but I'm just not sure where I want to put it. I like having it in the flower forest here, but it's a really, really small flower forest. I mean, freaking tiny flower forest. So I've considered putting something like this on a larger scale back behind Falcon Crest, but it just hasn't been something I've had a need for. I needed a little bit of honey for the, the flying machine, the world of the world eater down there. Um, and it, I thought I did. Turns out I didn't. So that was the only reason I even set this up in the first place. But yeah, uh, whenever I need a large scale need for honey, I might end up putting something behind Falcon Crest, but you know, we'll see. Um, and looking at sort of this area here, uh, and, the, and the area we're going to see next, it's something that I really want to start doing more in my world, is having just little small builds all over the place, right? If we look at Aresia or Falcon Crest, those places are really big, right? Like, that's a lot of effort. But something like this, a project like this, isn't that much effort, really. Um, it's just redoing some villager houses and, you know, building a barn or something like that, and it... I don't know, I think it just adds more life to the world. There are these small little villages or small little projects around the place with iron golems. Sorry, friend. Um, and it's something that I, I, I want to start doing more. So that, you know, that, that fishing village that I was talking about over here. Um, I want to add, you know, something here. And then realistically, what I want to do is start connecting my world up with paths. I think would be really cool to do. 
um, which I've sort of star already started doing. There's a path over here that connects Falcon Crest to Aresia, but I want to continue that path out here and then even onwards here to the um, to the village, which doesn't really have a whole lot of anything interesting in it. I just read it a few houses here and there, um, and then it's got kind of a kind of a cool beach here that that I want to do something with, but I don't really know exactly what I want to do. Um, just yet, but it's, you know, it's got kind of a cool beach. Um, some cats around, I guess. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a village, right? Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing, whoop, nothing nobody hasn't, whoa. Nothing that, nothing new. <laughs> Other than maybe some of these builds that I'm, I'm pretty happy with. This house I love. I absolutely love this house. I think it's beautiful. Um, and this one too, actually. I really like, I like both of them very much. <laughs> um, no interiors, naturally, because the day that I do an interior is the day that I die. Uh, um, uh, neither does this barn, but, you know, it's beside the point, right? <laughs> so I think that, uh, that about wraps it up for everything up here on land, but we do have a couple things to go see out at sea. So as we're flying around out here, um, I do want to look for something. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here he is! <laughs> This is one of the wonders of my survival world, this Jimmy here. I have absolutely no idea how he got out of here. I, it, like, like land is so far away, and I'm not, I don't load these chunks for very long at a time, and he doesn't ever seem to move. I have absolutely no clue why he's here, and why I've also traded with him. Because he's, you know, he's got the diamond there. I've traded with him before. I've, I've maxed this dude out. Why is he here? <laughs> I, I genuinely have no idea. Um, I'm glad I found him, though. And we can look at what he sees. This is all he ever sees, because he doesn't ever move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I need a name for him. He needs to become, like, an attraction or something like that. If you guys have a name for this dude, let me know. Maybe, like, Castaway Wilson or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just for reference, the village is right over there. Um, Castaway or Jimmy or whatever is right there. Uh, and then... My drowned farm, my trident farm, I should say, is right around here. So I didn't have any tridents, and I wanted tridents, so I built a farm for tridents. Uh, and it's a pretty simple, pretty simple farm here. So what I will do is I'll AFK up here using that same sort of spawning sphere trick you saw me do earlier. If I AFK up here, that means that the only place that mobs can really spawn is kind of in this like rectangle or square that you can see that I sort of flattened out. So the drowned will spawn here and go, ooh, I want to stomp on those eggs. I don't like turtle eggs. Boo, turtle eggs. And they'll come towards it, get caught up in the water stream, and pushed through the portal. Uh, at which point, I can go through the portal over here. Um, whoop, and slay them all. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll, I'll step through. There's really nothing interesting on the other side. It's, it's, it needs, it needs work. Um, yeah, just right next to a bastion, actually, which is kind of neat. But yeah, they'll come through here, and then I can kill them, and, you know, they'll drop their goods here. So, yeah, a little, little small trident farm. It was pretty easy to set up. Um, gave me one or two tridents, which is all I really need. Oh, it's raining. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, only one or two tridents. That's really all I need. Um, but yeah, that is the only thing out here in the ocean. Um, this is the actual cool project in the ocean. Um, this also doesn't have a name, but, you know, that's fine. Not everything needs a name, right? And this, if you can't tell from, well, that, here, let me sleep to get rid of the rain. So now that we haven't been interrupted, this wonderful build here, you can't tell from the, uh, you know, that <laughs> is a guardian farm. So what used to be here was an underwater temple, um, that I ended up drowning out. Uh, so I got rid of all the water in it and built a farm on top of it. So the intention of this area, or this build, was it was sort of like, I don't know, I, I had a few things running through my mind when I built it, and, you know, you can see if I go around to the back, it is not completed, because why would it be? <laughs> um, let me land here. Yeah, very incomplete. Um, but like I said, I had a few ideas for what exactly I wanted to do here. I was originally thinking maybe there was like some 
some Ice King brought his castle out here, or some, not Ice King, some king took his castle out here to get, you know, get away from enemies, or maybe this is like a, like a prison or a fortress of some kind for either Falcon Crest or a different kingdom around the world that they'd put their most dangerous criminals here, sort of like an Alcatraz-esque vibe. Um, but there would be some lore, some reason for why this fortress was here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, there we go. And in the process oh, of them building this fortress, they discovered an ice crystal. Oh, that's not the right way. An ice crystal underneath it that, that you know, whoever was here attempted to sort of use for their own purposes, whether to take power from it or, you know, whatever. And as a result, the ice crystal sort of went out of control and ended up destroying this fortress almost. So this is the only area that I really have done. Um, it was sort of like a, just a proof of concept. We can see the crystal coming through the center of the building here. Um, ideally, it would be coming out of the top. Shaw. It would be coming out of the top of the building, and you'd see cracks coming out. You know, the building would be sort of falling apart a bit. Um, and, and so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really cool idea. I, I really love um, building something that, that is broken, almost, and falling apart. I mean, you know, there's holes in the floor, holes in the ceiling, like... It was such a fun thing to do, to build something and, like, have it... Because I basically had to build this whole interior and think, okay, now let's ruin it, right? Which is different. It's very unique. It's something that I haven't done before. Um, not globally unique. I mean, plenty of people have done this build style before, but, but something that I had never done before that I had a lot of fun doing um, and that I will continue to do whenever I decide to keep working on this place. <laughs> fun side note. Um, as a bit of lore for you and to tell you about how bit of a crazy person I am. Um, it was one block too long that way. So I had to rebuild everything one block to the left. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I, I... I didn't realize it wasn't symmetrical until I started doing some of the detailing, like over, well, like here. I realized, oh crap, it isn't symmetrical, and I had to move everything over. I don't know how I didn't see it before. <sighs> but yeah, I rebuilt it. Um, part of my excuse as to why this place is so barren, um, the other part is that I kind of don't even... Well, actually, I should go in, like, the official entrance, now that I think about it. Um, this is just the ease of access entrance. Um, the actual, quote-unquote... Why is our... Oh, that's right, because the, the mob switch is off right now. Um, well, yeah. The actual, like, quote-unquote official way is to go back around here, and the, the ice crystal sort of opens up a bit, and you can fly down into the depths down here. So this used to all be filled with water. This used to be a, um, a fortress, or not a fortress, a, uh, a water temple. Water temple, thank you, Glenn. Um, and I, I cleared it all out with the flying machine. I did not place all the sand, man I mean, I did place all the sand manually, but the, the flying machine sort of took the sand across in waves and, and drowned out all of the, um, my fish, drowned out all of the water for me. Um, I don't know, this is such a cool view, I think. I, I, I do really like it down here. It is it is interesting. I wish it was a bit more bright, but hey, you know, it's okay. Um, the other thing I wish it was is I wish this ice crystal in the middle was more crystal-like. It feels very, very boxy, kind of. Ugh. I don't know, I don't like the shape that much. Um, there's also a hole in it because a creeper blew it up. That's beside the point, though. But I had to make it boxy just because of the design of the farm. Um, you can see the guardians falling down here. Um required the, these tanks to be this size to make the farm, like, run optimally. I am getting a little framey, because there's a lot of entities down there right now. <laughs> um, oh god, I don't even want to think about... Oh, 20. No. My computer is not happy about playing Minecraft and running Optifine at the same time already, let alone having to load, you know, god knows how many entities down there. Um, but anyways, not super happy with the shape, um, but, you know, make it work. The design of the farm is pretty simple. If you drown all of the water in the bounding box of a water temple, uh, and then you put water, the guardians can only spawn on the water. <laughs> so they do. And then there's soul sand here at the bottom, which is also why I'm very framey, is because the, there's particles going on here that it's trying to render, but then doesn't because the glass. Anyways, um, they get pushed up and pushed over and down into this little killing chamber here. So, there we go. Uh, yeah, they get put here. And then, you know, I, I would stay here and slice, 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 slice. Take them all out. Uh, a very, very, very good XP farm, if not a bit laggy. Um, and then all, you know, the output of the farm gets gets put here. Uh, 
I, I, I take stuff from here. A lot of sea lanterns, which is great. Prismarine, prismarine crystals are great. Love me some sea lanterns. Prismarine bricks themselves, you know, they leave something to be desired, but it's good to have a good supply of them, I guess. Um, and yeah, I guess something interesting that I just noticed that I didn't talk about yet is my tools. So Gustavo, if you're watching, you will get this one. Uh, those of you who are not we weebs, uh, you won't get it. Uh, or if you are a weeb and you haven't seen Noragami, uh, you wouldn't get it. Um, I break pickaxes, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, that's all that needs to be said about that. Johnny is uh, a reference to B-double-O, so if you haven't seen him, you wouldn't get that. And then my cookie dough spoon, of course. Um, but I used to enjoy all of my cookie dough. <laughs> so, yeah. That is it for the Guardian Farm, pretty much. Um, another example of a really cool farm that uh, I think the exterior looks okay. I definitely want to keep detailing this area, and I don't like that right there. But I just felt like there needed to be a centerpiece, so I put something there. I'm not in love with it. We'll see. Um... But yeah, I mean, another example of a farm that, that, that the facade looks okay, the farm itself works great, but the interior and the back are not complete. Actually, you know what I think about it? The witch farm is pretty complete. Right? That's pretty complete. <laughs> this, on the other hand, uh, definitely not. <laughs> so here we are, flying with Eresia coming back into sight. And we are going to head up here to the Eresia Nether Cloud to show off... Um, one more mega farm of mine. Well, actually, a couple mega farms of mine, and then we're gonna explore a bit around the Nether, see exactly, you know, what I've got going on over there. Because I realize that we haven't done that uh, just yet. Um, so at this point, we've reached all four of the main portals. Um, I do need more rockets because I fly through rockets like a madman. Um, thank you, Witch Farm. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've reached all four of them. You can see there are some bridges coming off, some boat, nether boat bridges. We'll get to those in a second. But now we're going to talk about how do I have 263 levels? Uh, and the answer is that up there. The gold farm. It's actually a very small gold farm. Um, which I'm sure some of you go, oh, it didn't move this small to me, but it's, it's freaking tiny. Uh, and it's not that great, but hey, you know what? I wanted something that fit in the size that I wanted it to and still worked well. And, and, and this is not to say that the gold farm doesn't work well. Obviously, I have 263 levels, and is there any gold around here? Um, a lot of gold. I should have shown you my gold stash in Aresia. Yeah, I have a shulker box full of gold blocks, so this this farm does its does its job, absolutely. Um, no doubt about that. But, um... How do I get up from here? No. But, um, yeah, gold farm. Pretty simple design. Um... Zombie pigments spawn on the uh, the magma blocks here. They get drawn towards the center with the turtle egg right up there. And then they fall. And I kill them. Four X... Oh, I think it. Four XP. Pretty classic, um... Pretty classic uh, thing going on. Yeah, I mean, they give really good XP. Oh, that honey block sound is so gross. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean... XP, it's quick, you can sit here in AFK, it's very easy um, to just sit here and swing your sword with like an AFK program or something like that, and then they all die. Um, so, yeah, it's on my pigment farm, it's how I get all my XP, or most of my XP, I should say. Um, this is Falcon Crest, so the ice spike biome is this way, it's where I get all my packed ice. That's not, I think I also have an ice, well, no, I actually don't have an ice farm out there. That's kind of not interesting, that's kind of meh, honestly. Um... The next place to see, though, is... Whoop, that didn't do what I wanted. The last sort of big city... It's not really a big city, it's definitely smaller. Um, but my Desert Pyramid area um, is out this away. Just to take a break from seeing farms, we've got one more farm to see after this. One more mob farm, I should say, to see after this. Whoop, that didn't land on the ice like I wanted to. Um, we'll take a look at a, at a build first, right? Mix it up a bit. I like doing that in that world. Mixing, I, I don't know. When I first started this world, I was heavily, heavily invested in building. You can tell that. Oh, frick, I didn't turn off the mob switch. Crap. Uh, oh well. Um, you can tell looking at Falcon Crest, there's no mob, there's no farms of any kind there. Um, and that's where I, you know, build first. That's what the majority of, of, you know, my buildings were when I started this world. Uh, and I was not thinking about farms at all. Aresia definitely has a little bit more of a technical emphasis, and then we start coming out to the other, some of the other areas that have, you know, farms built in them or whatever. 
but uh, it's been something that I've, I've wanted to do better at, balancing building and farming in my world, because I think they're both fun, and uh, I want to be, you know, getting better and improving myself at both aspects of the game. Anyways, this place here doesn't have a name, just a desert village, because um, it is a small village. Um, this this village was not generated here, I built this, um, if you can tell from the, yeah, these buildings don't look like village buildings. Um, yeah, this place is is interesting, and this place is the answer to oh. <laughs> this. Oh. This place is the answer to a question that I get very frequently: is uh, you know, like Quinn, if you're playing in this world for so long, how do you how do you stay engaged, right? How do you keep playing in the world? And one way that I do that is I literally just go on a random number generator. I've only done this once. This is the only time I felt the need to do it. It was between you know, a long break between updates. I had just come back to the game after taking, you know, a very long break off of it, and uh, I, I decided, you know what, I want to have a new survival world. I just didn't want to give up on this old world. So what I did is I just took a random number generator, generated some coordinates, and those coordinates happened to be somewhere around here-ish. Uh, actually, no, I think it was over here. Yeah, here we go. This is before I built Eresia. You can tell because I was kind of piloting the build style here. Um, trying to figure out what exactly was going on with, you know, some... whatever this thing is over here. Um, oh, it's an enchantment table, Quinn. It's not that hard. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this this area is so cool. You can see I had an idea for a structure that I wanted to put here, and then I ended up sort of shifting focus over here to the desert area, because I'd never built anything in a desert before, and I, and I thought it would be kind of a cool style or theme to go for. But, you know, keeping things fresh, right? If you get bored, what I did is I literally just came out here. I left everything I had at home. Um, I I think I literally just ran out here one time one day. I didn't bring anything with me. Ran to these coordinates and said, "Okay, I can't go home until I kill the end dragon, or or I get to the end." I should say. I don't think when I was playing this, you couldn't respawn the dragon yet. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. I settled down, you know, over there I think originally, and then I this was sort of my next. Like my starter base, quote unquote, my, my my second starter base almost. You know, the chanting area, some random items, some from me going end city raiding. Um, you know, I, I just played survival again in the same world. With my goal, instead of being to kill the dragon, was just to get back to the normal part of my world. Um, I came down here to sleep. That's what I came to do. Uh, I don't have a bed. What? <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, this is one way that I, I think works well to keep the world fresh. And you don't have to go that far. I mean, if you think about the range that you, that you spend in a normal Minecraft world, you don't move that far, right? I mean, I mean, looking at Aresia to Falcon Crest, all, all of that area of my world is very contained. You idiot. Very contained within itself, right? So you don't have to go that far um, to do something like this. And even if you do, it's just a short, you know, I went pretty far, but this is just a short nether tunnel away from the main part of my world. I'll take this from the um, um, And yeah, and, and you can build in a totally fresh style, and it feels like a different world, except it's not. And it's still connected and still in your old world, and this can even inspire you to do things back at your main base, right? Or connect up the bases, or do new projects here, and, and it's almost like... You're in a different world, but you're not, because it's all the same, you know? Um, now I get to see my mob fighting skills. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this area is, is I like it a lot, but it's definitely an area that needs more love. I've got like a really easy, oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh no, no. There we go. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> you can tell I'm not used to having to fight mobs. <laughs> um, I have a skeleton. Spider farm is what that is. <laughs> Should not have gone in that way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like this area a lot. I think it has could have some cool lore um, in the desert, obviously, so you need a pyramid. We'll get to the pyramid in a second, though. Um, but yeah, I love some of these views. I love this sort of droopy bridge and kind of coming around the corner here to have this river kind of cutting through the village. And um, originally, I actually had a pyramid sort of like that, but it was here. Um, and I didn't like it, so I tore it down and moved it there. <laughs> uh, and this area, I've decided, is going to be more like a like a bazaar, a market. Um, you know, where you could come here, and there's just tons of stalls set up all over the place with tons of people selling different goods from all over the world, and, uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a water fountain or something like that in the middle, and, and you know, like, the maybe the reason that this, this civilization was able to survive in the desert is because, originally, what I was thinking is, 
they have some sort of some sort of ice crystal here or something like that almost like that that one city from avatar the last airbender that the spa city in the desert that has the ice crystal that water flows from and, and maybe that's you know why they're able to exist out here in the desert even though you know there's water right next to them and all that but um yeah I, you know i had plans to sort of expand out to this area here um, you know, bring the paths out, bring some houses around these sort of lake areas, and maybe start to take advantage of some of this really, really cool terrain. Um, but yeah, sand area. Pretty small, but it's a really cool build style that I, uh, I definitely want to try more of. It's something that, you know, you don't see almost any of these blocks. Acacia wood? Like, what? <laughs> Never used acacia wood in anything else before, but I think it works really, really well here. Um, baked beans are beautiful. Sometimes. Not all the time, but some, sometimes. <laughs> um... So, so yeah, this area, Sand Village, um, I guess that's about it for Sand Village, uh, nothing really, oh, <laughs> I think I say that's about it as I'm staring at the giant pyramid, <laughs> yeah, giant pyramid, huh, what's inside, um, farms, <laughs> I realized I didn't have any cactus one day, so I, uh, came out here and built the cactus farm into the floor of the pyramid, uh, and the intention was that I'd have a big wall of storage here, and then on either side, you can see I sort of marked it out a bit. On either side, I'd have really big sugarcane farms. So uh, this is something else that I've tried to do in my world of, of having different areas specialize in different things, right? So this area would specialize in sugarcane and cactus and sand, obviously. Um, and and Aresia was, just, you know, is supposed to sort of focus on trading, right? So very emerald based, whatever villagers traded you. Falcon Crest was, was maybe more iron and wood. Um, based right and and so having farms for specific items in areas where it makes sense to have farms for them i guess um has been something that i think drives it drives you to build more and build in various styles if you do something like that and it gives your different areas a purpose right there's a reason that i, I come out here to get cactus that's why i come here right and eventually i want to come here to get sugarcane uh, which, you know, to keep you moving around your world, and as you're moving around your world, you can get more inspiration for things that you want to build uh, in the future, right? And if you have a new farm that you want to build, but it doesn't really fit into anything you've already built, hey, guess what? You've got a, an excuse to build in a whole new style, right? So it's sort of a... Why did I come inside? Um, yeah, I think it's a good way to sort of keep things alive in the world, and keep things moving in the world, keep you moving in the world, I should say, uh, instead of just build farm, go, build farm, go, you know? And not kind of having a reason for that. Like, why is it? Why, when you build a farm, why is it located in the spot that it is? Is it just because it's convenient for you to have it there, or is there some in-world explanation as to to why the farm is there? And I think the latter makes your world feel more alive, and I think can help you stay more interested in a world. It at least helps me stay more interested in the world. Um, but now we are off to see what I had mentioned as the only interesting. Thing below the roof of the nether uh, in my world, and that would be a nether-based farm that we will get to eventually when I, I'm i low on rockets, because I keep using them. <laughs> uh, it's kind of far, because I had to go to a very specific location for this farm, and you'll see why when we get there. As a bit of explanation, um, the biome we're in currently is called a Soul Sand Valley, and it spawns mobs differently than any other biome in the game. Or any other biome in the nether, at least. Uh, most biomes will have, you know, there's mob cap, mobs spawn around you, like I was mentioning. But in the Soul Sand Valley, what happens, and this will give you a hint as to what the farm is once I, you know, <laughs> take a peek. Uh, in the Soul Sand Valley, mobs don't spawn. Mobs spawn based off of where other mobs are, basically. Oh, don't you dare come at me. Oh, I'm just like a bitch. <laughs> um, mob spawn based off of where other mobs are. That doesn't apply to nether fortresses, though. Nether mobs, nether fortress mobs will just spawn in the bounding box of the nether fortress, regardless of what biome they're in. And what that means is they use the normal mob cap. So what that means, if you build a, a, a farm like this in a soul sand valley, you only have to spawn proof the nether fortress, uh, and then your farm becomes insanely efficient uh, without having to spawn proof all of this. Um, which is really good. So I only had to place like maybe 10, 15, maybe 20,000 buttons instead of like 50 uh, or 60 or 70,000 buttons. Actually, I, think I probably only had to place like 10,000 buttons now that I'm thinking about it um, to block off all the spawns of the fortress. And that allows you to make, as you might have guessed, a wither skeleton farm with some puppies. 
Um, so yeah, Wither Skeleton Farm. Very, very nice farm. It's responsible. It's the reason why I don't really care about beacons that much. Like, I have, I think... Yeah, like, I have 20 beacons just sitting in a box <laughs> for whenever I need them. Uh, and... Whoop, there we go. And if I need more heads, uh, I have a few. <laughs> That's another stack of beacons sitting in there, potentially, right? So, I'm not too, uh, too concerned about that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess as to... I already explained a bit about why the farm's efficient. How it works is uh, Wither Skeletons don't like piglins, and so they come to attack him, and they can see him uh, from, well, not almost anywhere. This farm is kind of inefficient. I did not design it super well. I only wanted to put one piglin because I'm a lazy. I'm a lazy guy. <laughs> uh, I should have put more, and I should have had it be maybe more elaborate, but, you know, whatever, right? That's fine. Um, it's still really efficient. It's good enough for my needs, right? And that's all that matters. Um... So, what happens is, any mob that isn't a Wither Skeleton will spawn here and immediately start taking damage because of these Wither Roses. Um, and so they'll just kind of end up dying, and the Wither Skeletons, once they kind of wander within range of the Piglin, will see him, get angry, and fall down. The dogs really don't like the Wither Skeletons, so they kill them, uh, and I can just sit here. If I wanted to, I could drop these dogs down using pistons and uh, use my Looting Sword, but... If I use my Looting Sword here, I end up hitting the dogs, and I definitely do not want to do that, because they were a pain to get here. <laughs> but I brought an extra, so it's okay. Uh, this portal doesn't go anywhere yet, but I want it to one day. This should really go all the way through, but... Uh oh, oh, wait, it can't, because the farm's there. Duh. Um, but, uh, yeah, with the skeleton farm, right? Yeah, farm. Ooh, fuck me. There we go. I made it out. Oh, skeleton. Um... More rockets. Give me another stack of rockets. <laughs> I normally don't go through these through this many, because I'm normally not moving around quite this much, but... Hey, you know what? It's worth it for the world tour. Uh, and it's not like it hurts me that much anyway. I got plenty of sugar cane and plenty of gunpowder. <laughs> so that actually does it for the nether. Um, I guess I can show the end. There's nothing really interesting in the end. Uh, I guess you know, we'll, we'll head over to the end next, see the other dimension, see I have a, one or two interesting things over there, and then we'll wrap it up with the project that I'm currently working on, that I'm super excited about, and it's been really cool so far. Um, and I think some of you are aware of what it is, but yeah, we'll get there in a bit. Well, I've made my way back here from the Wither Skeleton Farm, and we are now heading to the location of the end portal. Pretty, pretty humble spot with just some... Oh, it's kind of weird that I have concrete here, right? Uh, not really. Uh, what I did was I used some old glitches to get rid of the Eyes of Ender here. And what that allows me to do is if I come here... I gotta reset it, because I just used it not long ago. Um, and I place, place, place. And I... Whoop, place, place place. Basically what's going on here is this 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 piston will sort of uh, fall back and then or push out basically. So what's going to happen is the sand will kind of get pushed back because it's going to get pulled sort of and then pulled up and then pushed and it'll kind of just do a circle a loop and uh, it gets pushed and pulled such that you know when sand is moving it's an entity basically it's not a block it's an entity. So what will happen is the sand will be going through the, the, the portal, and then the blocks will come up at the same time it's going through the portal, so it moves into block mode, basically. So it gets duplicated, is what's going on. Well, I have to switch here. Um, it's getting duplicated. And so when we go over to the side of the end, there's going to be a bunch of sand sitting there, because it thinks the sand keep the entity of the sand, keeps going through the portal, uh, and will sort of just sit at the, on the other side of the portal uh, in, in like, a, like, a, like an item form, basically. So I can use this to duplicate any kind of concrete or gravel that I want, right? Any any block that you can that you can drop and have it, you know, fall, basically. So any gravity block can be duplicated like this if I come here. Here's all my sand. So, you know, I was running it for, what, a few seconds there, and that's a stack and a half of sand? So, you know, you can just sit there and let that thing run, and, you know, it's good to go. So this is the end. First things first, everyone's got one. Right? I mean, what are you doing if you don't have an Ender Ender, right? I mean, it's that's crazy. It's a crazy thing to say that you don't have an Ender Ender. Um, yeah. I've lost one too many Elytra in this place, so... I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, Ender Ender. I mean... 
Do I need to say anything? Probably not. Um, I want to redo this, actually. It's something that I should say. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, good. I have a pearls. I want to redo this. It's so annoying that I have to, to swipe to kill them, even though this is more efficient because I'm, like, literally one block away from the void. This is the most efficient it could be. I just, I don't know. I think it's, it is so much easier just to be able to swipe and kill. Swipe and kill. Um... So, and I, and I don't like the build here at all. I think the build looks dumb. Whoa, Jesus Christ, that was so terrifying. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, I don't like the build that much. Can I go here? Can you go to the following? Uh, that's probably fine. <laughs> Let me fly up and, and get him to despawn. And that way I can get a good view of my end of my end. Here we go. Beautiful, isn't it? So I have quote unquote completed the end dragon. That means I've killed it 20 times to get every single one of these bedrock portals here. Now almost none of them have actually been explored. Um only a few. Uh but this kind of brings me to like kind of like not the end goal for my survival world, but a goal that I've had for a long time here. I want to put something insane here. I mean, absolutely crazy. I've thought maybe a giant floating quartz castle, or you know, I don't, I don't even really know. I want, I want a ring around here, and I want each of these end portals to either go to a farm or maybe a microbiome or something like that. I want this to kind of be like my main base. Is the end? I've always loved the end. It's like I think it's so cool. It's my favorite dimension. Um. I want to put a base here too eventually, like outside here, but I want this to kind of be like my main base is the end. Um, yeah, I think it would be so cool. <laughs> um, right now, not a lot of anything going on here. I've got a place to kill the wither down here, mine some endstone for Aresia. Um, the only interesting thing really going on currently is this, which I was terrified to go through last time. Like, I, this is my second take doing the world tour. Um, absolutely terrified to go through here last time, but here we go. Uh, you can tell why I might be a bit terrified. Um, so what is this, you might be asking? This is a wither rose farm. So you might have wondered, Quinn, you know, how the hell did you get all those wither roses for the wither skeleton farm? This would be how. Um, and basically what happens is Endermen spawn in, they get angry at the Endermite, they fall down, and then the Wither kills them. <laughs> so I've got a Wither stuck here. Um, which is very dangerous, obviously. <laughs> not a, uh, not a phenomenal idea. But, oh. Is this actually broken broken? Yeah, this is actually broken broken. <laughs> it actually, I can't turn, you see that piston on the ground? That means I can't turn it off anymore. Uh, which is bad. But, hey, you know what? I don't want to spend too much time here. Yeah, so see, it's totally broken. Um, typically what would happen is, you know, they would get killed by the Wither, and the Wither Roses would come down here. But that didn't quite happen. Um, so yeah, I want to have little things like this at the end of each of my, uh... Oh, oh back. Well, I don't want to do that yet. Um, at the end of each of my, uh my portals. I want uh, I want a little something like this, you know, a little something something, a little something cool. Um so yeah, maybe that'll happen one day. That that is a that is a grand overarching goal for the world that I hope will happen one day. But anyways, let me line myself up and head off into the void. I will see you guys once I get back to the main island. Back uh, at the main end island. Turning to the overworld. Actually will this put me right in the right spot? I actually think it will. To see our last project. Oh well, fuck me then. I'll see you guys in a sec. This next um, place that we're going to see solved a few problems for me in the world. Um, it's right over here. The title of the project is Mount Barris. Uh, if you might have noticed from when I was going through, I think it was uh, Falcon Crest, I think I showed my iron supply. Um, which maybe to some of you is like, whoa, it's so much iron. It's like, I mean, it was two, because well, maybe a stack and a half of blocks there. Arisi has another six or seven stacks of iron blocks. That's not a lot of iron for me. I could go through that in a project pretty easily. Um, if I need a storage system for something, I mean, that's a ton of hoppers, and yeah, that can get taken out real quick. So I need an iron farm, and I also needed something to complete this sort of circle here. I needed something cool on the south end of my world, which is where Mount Ferris comes into play. Um, many of you might know that the next Minecraft update... I made this mistake last. 
time, so I need to make sure I get a good view. <laughs> Many of you may know that the next Minecraft update is the Caves and Cliffs update, where they are redoing cave generation and redoing mountain generation. And we already saw back over that way, uh, I made my own cave, so I figured, why not make my own mountain? <laughs> and that is why I made Mount Ferris. So Falcon Crest is literally right over here. Super, super close. Here's the backside of the old castle. You know, Slime Farm's right there for reference. Aresia is, is through the clouds over there. We'll see the bay coming to... Yeah, there's the Aresia right there. Mount Ferris over here. We'll let it come into view with the fog. Very, very cool build. Um, so far, at least. I don't know, I'm not in love with it, but uh, it's my first time building a mountain. And you know what? I think for that, it's okay. Like many things in the world, I don't want to talk about the backside. <laughs> Although, I haven't I haven't officially, like, I haven't said I finished this project yet, so that's fine, right? I'm still working on it. Um, I was working on it earlier today, for example. Um, but yeah, so the idea here would be build a mountain and put an absolutely epic iron farm right in the middle of it here. So I'll have one. This is supposed to be like a medium peak. This is the highest peak of the mountain, which if I head up here is y equals 241, which the current build height is 256. So that'll get upped in the next update, but oh no, I almost made it. That'll get, that'll get upped in the next update, but um, I mean, it's still tall. If I come up to the medium-sized peak, the quote-unquote medium, plus one. 197. Y equals 100. And, oh, that was right there. Thank you, Quinn. Great job. Huh. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh -huh. So yeah, Mount Ferris. I've already placed a solid uh, 12 shulker boxes of stone, I think. Uh, I'm working through my next batch down here. I've made pretty good progress through all of them. I don't know. Here, let me be here. Oh, those are rockets. Made pretty good progress through all of them and some porches too. Um, but the idea would be main peak, another high peak, and then maybe a background peak so that when you're looking at it kind of from here, so that it's more of a mountain range instead of just a mountain, because I do think it looks a bit odd just having it kind of like boom, right on up. It is a bit strange. Um, but yeah, so you'd have this peak, that peak, and then maybe one peak kind of there in the background almost, just to kind of balance it out a bit. I thought could be cool. Am I going to have enough stone for that? God knows. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Mount Ferris will be a very cool project. Once complete, of course. Uh, but who knows how long that'll take. And it will be a lot, 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 lot of stone. Um, so I also have to gather all of that stone, which, you know, will be a bit of a pain. <laughs> But I think that about does it for the world tour. Um, there's there's plenty of other small little nooks and crannies I could show you, but in terms of, of bigger projects that are actually impressive or interesting, that about covers it. Um, so I think we'll end it with where we began. Or actually, you know what? No, there's one little thing. I don't know if I mentioned this or not when I was over here. Um, but I want to start turning this area into sort of like a memorial area, right? Because this is like spawn. There's there's the 10 year anniversary memorial there. I want to start including like maybe big milestones of the world or my life or, you know, whatever in this area here. Just to sort of be able to walk through and say, oh, I remember when that happened. Or, oh, I remember doing that in the world. Or, you know, oh, yeah, whatever, right? Um, and I think, you know, the first piece of that will be the box that I unboxed today. My 1,000 degree glowing knife. <laughs> So I'll just leave that box there and use some stone. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I get excited when I see stone now because I know. What are you? <laughs> yeah, oddities. Oddities in the world, like I said. <laughs> plenty of nooks and crannies of, of weird... Oh, plenty, uh, plenty of nooks and crannies of, of plans, things laid out, ideas strewn around that... Uh, haven't gotten their their time in the limelight yet, but um, but yeah, so um, I think that'll about do it for now, I suppose. Um, we'll say goodbye to the cows. Oh, oh hold on, I oh, let's say goodbye to Frida real quick. There we go. Oh, Frida, sorry. Maybe next time I have the world tour, Frida will have a home to her own, and it won't just be this tiny circle. I'm sorry, Frida. Or maybe I'm not sorry. No, I'm sorry. 
Um, yeah. Huh. Can I make it? Oh, I did make it. Let's go. Hmm. But yeah, that about does it. Got Aresia in the background a bit. You can see it on the side of the view. Falcon Crest Castle, the city of the kingdom of Falcon Crest. All laid about. And um, I think that's everything. So uh, until next time, I'll head back down, uh, down here. I'll see you guys later. Well, well I'll head back down here, actually. All right. Well, that's not what I want. I will see you guys the next time I do a world tour. Uh, who knows when it'll be? Probably six months, if I ever do one again. Who knows? But anyways, for now, bye-bye.